Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm here with the part two of the lore of Fate Grand Order Salem. Um, and I did see like yeah, what was the other you know lore video that I had to look at after this, right? Or you know basically that relates to this, right? So basically you know the lore of Abigail Williams, right? So yeah, I think I'm gonna just do that one next Friday, right? Um, unless you know it's just something else that I might want to look at uh, before that. But yeah, I think I'm gonna do that just because you know it's relating to it. Um, and then there's more story of her, right? Um, but yeah, other than that, yeah, really, yeah, I ain't got much else to say. So yeah, I just started up here. Um, yeah, I think we, we literally only have like 15 minutes left. Uh, so yeah, not too much, right? Um, but yeah, other than that, yo, hope you guys will enjoy. Make sure you like, subscribe, and let's get this reaction started. Okay, so yeah, here we go. So yeah, I think I might actually bring it back some actually because yeah, I do remember that yeah, she finally identified herself and then they were talking about the monster. Um, but I, actually, I really don't remember exactly. So I think I'm gonna so form a pact with her. start it up In like exchange, you know, about she stops here. Our contact with Caldea. Yeah, okay, yeah. So the yeah, right here. Interrupted when the village gets attacked by ghouls of the people Hopkins had executed, about, yeah, ghouls. including Tituba. We're left with no choice but to slay the ghouls. But thankfully, this is a good thing. While we aren't aware of it at first, letting Tichuba die and then pacifying her ghoul actually allowed her to break free of Salem's control and return to being the Queen of Sheba. Okay, well, yeah, I guess that's good, right? Solomon, she has a resistance to the demon god's bounded field and creates her own bounded field in the forest near Salem's exit. That said, she's masterless and lacking in mana, so if we don't find her, she'll disappear soon. We won't find that out for a while. Either way, after the ghouls are destroyed, we catch a glimpse of Lavinia's grandfather, Absalom. He's looking mighty sus. The next day, after a meeting at Town Hall, Salem's reverend asks us to put on a play to entertain the children. Not a bad idea considering ghouls just rose from the grave last night. We give a parodied performance of Journey to the West, while Sansan steps out to investigate the Waitley mm, House. Okay, she's a narrator, what okay. Had to do with the ghouls. While we had convinced Abigail and Lavinia to watch our play, they decide to ditch midway after realizing Sansun isn't in the performance. Hell, I'd bail if I had to watch Journey to the West again after the event. Turns out we weren't the only ones suspicious of Absalom, as Carter and Hopkins have gone to his house to accuse him of summoning the ghouls. As expected, they planned to hang him right away, but the gallows were damaged during last night's attack. Sanson tries to reason with Hopkins, but winds up being ordered to repair the gallows instead. Fearing that going against the villagers would be falling into the demon god's trap, he decides to comply. As soon as the repairs are made, Absalom and the other Waitley elders are immediately hanged. Oh, the second dang. sacrifice has been okay, made. Well, yeah, that, there that goes. On as this happens, and vows to claim vengeance upon Hopkins. Just like the previous night, more ghouls emerge following the execution. We clean them up, and the next day, we finally reestablish contact with Caldea. Da Vinci tells us that not only were our memories tampered with coming into the singularity, we're also being fed visual and auditory hallucinations. As Sanson surmised, we have to be careful not to fall further into Raum's trap. Reasonably so, the villagers are starting to freak out over the witch and ghoul situation, and turn to blaming our troop for the recent occurrences. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't help that one of the villagers at the helm of this paranoia is a mega simp for Matahari, and is angry she rejected him. Oh, Naturally, of course, right, yeah. Matahari of using her beauty yeah. to corrupt the humble It's like, yeah, he gets rejected, so of course, right. I just knew she was gonna get slut-shamed eventually. Meanwhile, Mashu decides to accompany Carter as he sets out to leave the village in search of reinforcements. She hopes to find a way out of Salem, but instead winds up disappearing. She almost falls for one of Carter's traps and is attacked by ghouls, but is saved by being brought to the Queen of Sheba's hidden camp. Sadly, this means Mashu isn't around when Matahari is brought to trial for her witchcraft. Like all the other trials, it's a total farce. Whenever reasoning or testimony is presented for the defendant, Hopkins just throws it out. It makes even less sense than Monty Python. If she <laughs> yeah, okay. Same as a duck, yeah. She's made of wood. Made of wood. A witch! A witch! 
<laughs> yep, of course. Like the most unreasonable claims, right? Visions of her past, which seem to parallel the tragedy she's currently living through. Of course, she's sentenced to death, and Hopkins has the gall to charge Ritzka. Wait, and then we just nah, bro. We can't let that happen now, right? Of course, Ritzka wants to save her, but we stop when Cersei dissuades us. It appears Cersei has a plan, and Robin Hood reads Matahari's lips at the gallows as she tells us to trust her. Just as Matahari and some other captives are hanged, shit gets chaotic. For real? Randolph Carter's house is okay, lit on fire. Okay, what? Presumably yeah, there goes Mata then, right? And ghouls attack. During the assault, we rush the gallows and retrieve Matahari's body. And shockingly, Sansan decides to stay behind to protect Hopkins of all people. Perhaps as a fellow executioner, Sansan can sympathize with the conniving rat. That or by getting on his good side, Sansan can better investigate just what the hell is going on. Either way, as the ghouls attack, the rest of the party flees to the forest with Matahari in tow. As a reminder, our servants aren't nearly as strong thanks to whatever curse is on them from Raum's bounded field. So when we're overrun by ghouls, we're glad to be saved by the Queen of Sheba. It's just in time for both of us. She needs a master or she'll disappear, and we need her magecraft. She takes us to her hidden campsite, and we reunite with Mashu. There, we also find out that Matahari had only faked her death. Oh, okay. Cersei had made. That, okay, Yay! yeah. I was, about, I was about to say, like, yeah. Good fucking news. Yeah, we can't let her, her uh, die, torn, right? Abigail's been hanging with us. And while she doesn't understand everything that's happening, she's convinced we're good civilization. After some deliberation, we return to the village, leaving Matahari and the Queen of Sheba behind, since they're supposed to be dead and all. Apparently, villagers are complaining about the tavern and its rowdy sailors again. Lavinia's been staying there with Captain Marsh, a good friend of the Waitleys, and she's arranged for a boat that can take both her and Abigail out of Salem. Sadly, given this is a singularity, that probably wouldn't work even if they tried. Not to mention Abigail's too conditioned by Raum to even dare leaving the town. Desperate, Lavinia resolves to finish her family's dream of summoning Soot Typhon, not fully understanding the consequences. While that's going down, the sailors get in a fight with Cersei after mistaking her for a child. And we settle our differences by <laughs> having real. the sailors join us in a play about when Medea went to Cersei's island to learn of magecraft. At night, Sansom continues his investigation by conversing with Hopkins. He learns that Lavinia's already confessed to teaching Abigail one of her family's rituals, making both girls candidates for execution. Thankfully, Abigail is still with us, and within Sheba's camp, we're no longer subject to Raum's brainwashing. This allows Mashu to revisit her list of Salem residents and pinpoint that Carter was never actually there. He's now our prime suspect for being the demon god. As usual, ghouls descend upon the village at night, and while we fight them, Carter returns from his excursion with soldiers armed with silver bullets. As an educated man, he understands superstitious factoids about ghouls and how to kill them, which makes it odd when he absolutely oh, wait, wasn't, refuses to believe Wait, wasn't Carter disguised as someone, right? He's <laughs> Unless, yeah, unless I'm just thinking of someone else. Sets us up in a vacant house where but she th yeah, I thought Carter was uh, someone else. Like, <laughs> yeah, look at that. Conducting more hangings, okay. Including the sailors. And with each night of murder, the gates to Sip Typhon get opened. The god's arrival is upon us. Perhaps because of this, the next day, Abigail goes out to the forest on her own and sacrifices a rabbit to enact a spell Lavinia had taught her. During this, she's caught by Sanson and Hopkins. Oh, and then... Eager as always, Hopkins tries yeah. to arrest her, but then Lavinia sneaks through Eventually, the Eventually, yeah, call her a witch to too? Or, oh, yeah. okay, yep, stab right. She tries him, to right. offer Hopkins as a final sacrifice for the ritual, but it's not enough. She then confesses to okay, teaching Abigail saying a whole lot there, I can... soldiers to kill her own okay. spot, hoping to make herself a sacrifice. Instead, Sanson takes the fall, saying he murdered Hopkins and oh, allows himself okay. to be arrested. So he Again, took the blame. To participate in this bullshit, still not knowing exactly what's going on. That night, Ritzka goes out for a walk and encounters okay. Mephistopheles out of nowhere. Okay, so yeah, who is this? To travel to places without ray shifting, so long as they qualify as hellscapes. Fair enough. Either way, he's moth, just here to moth, tell us that what? outside the singularity, it's almost April 30th, the day of Valpurgis Noct, ominously referred to as the night when witches become maddened. Essentially, it's a warning that shit's about to hit the fan. He disappears before anyone else can see him. Thanks, weirdo. Sure enough, the next morning, the sky is black, the wells are full of tar, and birds and insects swarm the village. Even with Hopkins dead, the trials are a friggin' joke, and it doesn't help that Sansun continues to confess. He has absolutely no intention of taking Cersei's poison and faking his death. Perhaps to allow the ritual to complete, 
he's willing to sacrifice himself as penance for having executed Marie Antoinette in life. Basically, all of this killing has rekindled his sorrows and regrets. Too bad all of our servants are still in a state of false incarnation. And if he dies like this, his Saint Graf will disappear along with his memories of ever being at Caldea. Oh yeah, we can't let that happen, right? Carter reveals that our party is hiding Tachuba, who should be dead. They sentence Sanson right away. He is Oh, and then, okay, yeah, Sanson. And another of her friends get killed. Abigail stands before the gallows and admits to bringing the girls out to the woods to conduct demonic rituals. The angry villagers Oh, and yeah, of course, yeah, they're gonna she call her a witch, right? Into a true witch, allowing herself to be consumed by Soot Typhon. Thankfully, we're able to calm her back down and return her to normal, but not without consequence. Ultimately, Ritska and Cersei are arrested for witchcraft. At this point, it's <laughs> yeah. clear that everyone in the village yeah, is under Randall's they're, control. They're just about to get arrested and all. Prison, we can finally talk to him without all the lies. Indeed, he is the demon god Raum. Okay, yeah, Raum, yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, isn't he someone in disguise, right? Um, yeah, I just couldn't tell who it was. As all the various intruders he led into the singularity as guests, such as the sailors, Tichuba, and even yeah, he was there the whole time. finally helped the ritual come to fruition. When the trial commences, everything is just ridiculous. Among the spectators and jurors are ghouls blended in with the surviving villagers. Technically, they're all ghouls, being continually resurrected by Raum to recreate Salem through each iteration. Abigail tries to take all of the blame herself, declaring herself an actual witch, but it hardly matters now that Carter is controlling everything directly. Confident, he explains his work on all the previous Salems, and outs Abigail as his guilty conspirator. To protect her, Lavinia enters the building and splashes Carter with a powder, Ibn Ghazi, to force him to materialize as a raven. In turn, breaking a bounded field around the town hall. The Queen of Sheba takes this opportunity to enter the building and establish her own. This finally allows Caldea's servants to fight to their full capacity. Thanks to this, as Abigail begins to succumb to Soot Typhon once more, we're able to hold her back. Angered that his plan is failing, Raum drops the act, and we're able to fight him as a legit demon god pillar. Even after winning, however, there's still a problem. Da Vinci contacts us and explains that the singularity is expanding, consuming mana from outside Salem as it does so. She gets agents of the Mages Association to contain the singularity with their own bounded fields. But to truly stop its expansion, we have to resolve things before it's too late. In a final desperate act of defiance, Raum takes his chance to turn back into a raven and viciously lunges at what we oh. think is Abigail. In truth, he aims for and mortally wounds Lavinia. Oh wait, hold on, wait, she's still fine though, right? So badly, Abigail breaks. She willingly right. accepts Okay, yeah, and this transforms body, again, right? She agrees that humans need to be punished. With her newfound power, she can tear through the bounded fields containing her, forcing both the Queen of Sheba and Cersei to sit out the fight to hold her back. The rest of the servants engage in a final battle. Okay. Oh, so yeah, that was like another eye, right? I really couldn't see it. But... With the outer God. Yeah, but like kind of like a third well, eye there. Cersei's her connection to Soot Typhon. Returning her to normal in time to experience Lavinia's death compassionately. Ah, oh, dang. Well, the next day, the singularity yeah. begins to dissipate. There goes Lavinia, right? Lavinia, and thankfully, all the people held hostage by the singularity in modern Salem will survive. Abigail, being a servant herself, is to vanish along with this fake Salem. Before that happens, though, so the wait, gentleman Chandra this is, Petra finally um, arrives after getting his body back. Yeah, the real. He is fascinated. Oh, uh, we're not Carter, but yeah, the real the like what man or whatever, right? His journeys across time um, and his actual body. Casting aside her fear of leaving Salem, Abigail takes him up on his offer, as it will give her the chance to one day reunite with Caldea and possibly even restore Sansa's memories. Both the Queen of Sheba and Cersei vanish, but we'll still be able to summon them through the Gotcha. And it's narratively implied that we do so. When Ritska and Mashu return to Caldea, they are delighted to find out that Sansun indeed regained his memories, just not those specifically pertaining to Salem itself. Abigail was able to help him, but only after he forgave himself for Marie Antoinette's death. As servants, they are able to move on from that tragedy and dance together as allies working to protect humanity. Of course, Abigail herself can be summoned in the gacha, presumably from some point in her okay, travels so when she figures that? out how to reunite with Caldea. Again, it's implied we do so. With that, the final epic of Remnant is resolved. Sadly, to the rest of the world, Caldea doesn't appear very competent. 
Unwilling to simply trust our word regarding the incineration of humanity, we are left suspending all ray shift activity until the UN, Mages Association, and Holy Church can investigate us. This sets events in motion for FGO's second arc, Cosmos in the Lost Belt, which we'll cover with the arc's dramatic prologue. Look forward to it. Okay, and I think that's about Thanks yep. for watching. Okay, so yeah, that's about it um for the Salem uh lore, right? Uh so yeah, I liked it, right? Um yeah, especially since it was like kind of older, right? You know, which witches and all that, right, had that type of theme to it. Um but yeah, yeah, I like that story, right? And I think I might actually do the Abigail Williams one, right? Uh next Friday. Um, instead of doing like the second most voter, you know, pulling up another poll. Because really, after this, I was actually just going to do another poll um, and not do the second most voted. Um, unless I needed to do that, right? The second most voted. Um, but, yeah, other than that, <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, mostly this whole, well, after, well, let's see. After he explained like all the characters and all, you know, basically so he can know who they are, right? Uh, when they show up. After that, it's just a whole bunch of, oh, you're a witch, you're a witch, you're a witch, right? Um, locking them up, arresting them, and then after that, just hanging, hanging them, right? Um, that's really all it was, right? If they did just, uh, just one little thing that's suspicious, right? It's like, literally, they call him a witch, and that's literally what, where is it? Like, when he edited it in there, right? Um, I mean, that's literally what happened, yeah, this part right is like literally, it's exactly what they're saying. It's just these weird claims, right? Saying like, okay, she she's made out of wood. Like, you know, I, I mean, I know that was a part of this clip right here, but still, basically, that's, that's basically what they were doing though, right? Like, something as simple as that. It's like, oh, now they're a witch, right? Um, but other than that, yeah, definitely, yeah, at least happy that some of them, uh, stayed alive right um and we're able to fake their deaths um it's unfortunate for what was it lavinia right i think yeah that was her sister right abigail's sister or at, le or at least like yeah her family right i think right the, what was it the um what wait waitlers yeah waitlers i guess right um if i'm right um yeah because this is when it oh no that's no that's when they accuse her um or did I go too far? Wait, let me see. Oh, no, it was, like, uh, right here. Okay, yeah, like, when they, yeah, got her family. So, yeah, like, the Waitleys or whatever. Um, yeah, besides all that, though, yeah, pretty good story. Got to see some new characters and all. Um, and some characters I've already seen, like, yeah, Mata. Yeah, Mata, I've already seen her before. Um, it's just, yeah, I get to see at least a little bit more. And find out, you know, just a little bit more what she's done. And, um, also, where is she? Um, oh, wait. I was trying to find her. <laughs> I think I, I think I skipped too much. Uh, okay, hey, perfect. Yeah, right. Like, right about, yeah, here, right? What was her name? Uh, oh, Nezha, Nezha. Yeah, because I remember her from the Indian Lost Belt, right? If I'm... Yeah, if I'm right on, yeah, the Indian Lost Belt. Um, yeah, I definitely got to see a lot of her there, right? But yeah, I get to see her here as well. So it's like, yeah, certain servants that I've seen before. Um, yeah, I really, I mean, well, yeah, I can see it now. Or I've been seeing it. But um, I didn't know, you know, basically they can go from like a Lost Belt or something like this, right? And be um, added to some other story, right? Lore. Um, so she was, well, I don't know which one she's mainly on. I feel like it's just the Lost Belt um, that she was mainly on. But uh, here, it's like, yeah, you get to see her as well, right? So, yeah, certain servants or whatever that you see at first, it's like, yeah, they can be a part of other lore. So, yeah, Mashu, yeah, she's always going to be there, right? Um, but it's like, yeah, Cer yeah, Cersei, right? Yeah, Cersei, she could be a part of some other lore, right? Uh, that's what I just like. But... Yeah, pretty much that's about it. So, yeah, I'm going to just end it off right here. So, I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to like, subscribe again. And I'll see you guys in the next one.